All right, and we're live. Hey, it's Jim Alsey again, and this is one of those informal things at the office, and it's not a television show. It's just a, an afternoon in the office. Uh, we're working uh, it's Tuesday afternoon, and we had a visitor, Corey Taylor, who has a very important uh, television show, interview show on the network OETA, the public. Uh, hey, Corey, welcome. How you doing, Mr. Halsey? Good. Well, you had uh, Manisa, my wife, on your show uh, earlier this week, and me, and so welcome to the office here. This is not a show. <laughs> this is just people that drop by and, and we right. say hi and, and share our friendships with all of those friends that we have out there that that, uh, that watch us. So. Good. Well, I'm glad to be here. I'm excited. I'm happy. You know, I've been spending some time with you today, which has been amazing. Definitely a huge wow factor. So I'm so glad that you know, you have the school online and you're doing the courses and everything because I was saying to you, I wish that was something I had when I was trying to do music and everything or struggling with that, but I'm glad that that's out there. Well, we're going to get you in one of the courses too because you're you're a great educator. Uh, you've been a teacher, a lecturer, uh, you're a motivational speaker. Yes, sir. And you have your own television show. So uh, we're going to get you to do one of our classroom uh, subjects that, that be a little more organized than this one, but you came in, and actually, uh, I was working on the Oak Ridge Boys Christmas Tour, wow. which starts in the middle of November, and we have a new Christmas CD that will be released this fall that uh, we're getting ready, so we tie all of that into, and we talk about this in the classes, we talk about how you coordinate so many things together, the Christmas Tour, which we'll have 30-some concerts with the Christmas all the goodies that you hear at Christmas time and the guys talking we talk about the, the CD and we'll have uh, our, our Christmas special to be running so we have two or three or four or five things by the time we get wow. through that sounds to good. promote for the Oak Ridge Boys. That's good. So this is what you do too. Yes You're, sir. You got a dozen things. <laughs> Tell us what you've got going. Oh my goodness well I'm in a process I mean I've written two books I'm in a process of writing three and four um, the, first, the third book is a book for women called What's Your Flavor? And it's about helping women to understand us men better. You know, it's not think like a man, act like a woman, all of that stuff. But it's my version of trying to help. I mean, I'm a dad. I have three daughters and two of them are adult women now. And so it's kind of like I want to put something out there to help them. And then I have a book called A Certain Epiphany. Um, that moment when everything changes and I'm I'm currently working on three and four. Three of course is a bigger demand because women want to know the ins and outs of relationships which is always good but then I also have the television show and that television show is doing extremely well we're actually getting ready to do um, expand what we're doing and you know you've actually gave me some great advice today on what I needed to do to do that which I, is another reason why I think those classes are important because I know that information is within those classes well, we have a lifetime of experience that we share on our HalseyInstitute.com and it's based on other people's experiences besides mine. I have 30 some really uh, top VIP people within the industry that share their knowledge and their experience with our classes, including the Oak Ridge Boys and Roy Clark and Tim McGraw and Dwight Yoakam. But other than that, presidents of record companies, of publishing companies, of booking agencies, and other management companies. And our good friend, Kurt Webster, who uh, has a big PR firm in Nashville, and he and, and uh, Jeremy Westby, his top associate, share a lot of their information as well, too. And so you'll be getting that because you're taking the course yes sir yes so sir is, <laughs> yes. i'm excited about taking the course as a matter of fact because just from our interactions today <laughs> i was like how do i know all of this stuff how can i get a hold of this stuff and you were like um it's in the course so right yes I'm taking it's in the, the course. course it's in the book too <laughs> which we uh operate in the book and right. I'm, a, I'm a i guess a, a self-promoter as well too it's called star maker <laughs> and i used to jokingly say they're twenty dollars a piece or two for fifty. Right. And surprisingly, I had a lot of people send in fifty dollars for two of them, and I returned ten dollars of it. I was, you know, it was a joke, but uh, I'm not good at math. <laughs> hey, I think you are good at math. You're just being bashful. 
Well, what is compelling about your show? Your show is on OETA, which here in Oklahoma is the biggest network. They have four television stations. Yes, sir. And you interview people. I was impressed with the the way, the warmth and the depth that you interviewed me. It wasn't the normal questions that I normally get on an interview. What compels you when you are interviewing somebody to where do you go? I mean, how do you start with the person? Well, basically, what um, from being a motivational speaker, the, the thing that I found that was so important to me when I do a show is when you're speaking to thousands of people, the first thing you have to do is an icebreaker to endear yourself to them, to get the people on your side, to get them cheering for you, and they want to hear what you have to say. So that's usually when I start the show off and I introduce you and I'm, I'm saying, well, what have you been up to? Because our viewers want to know if these people are in front of us, why are they important and why should we listen to them? So we do that. But the thing that makes me so excited about the show is that not only are the viewers viewing in, but it allows me to take that same journey with the viewers. So I do research a lot about the people that I'm interviewing, but at the same time, I want to leave that mystery. So as we are talking and having a one-on-one -on -one conversation or whether it be a group that I'm experiencing the same emotional connection and um, um, connection that the viewers are uh, express uh, are receiving and so that's what makes me do it because I am genuinely excited about everyone that I interview because I'm getting to learn something new and that's what I want the viewers to be able to pick up on well you do a good job of it too because Interviewing is just as an important talent as the person that you're interviewing themselves. And we do so many interviews with the Oak Ridge Boys. There's not a day that goes by that the guys are not doing an interview, either promoting the dates uh, that they're going to or talking about a new record release or talking about the history of their being inducted into the country a lot of times you find is that it's really a great interview if there's a connection between the interviewee and the interviewer. Right. And the Oak Ridge Boys have a, have a warmth and a, and a personality that draws that out. I'd like to get you to interview the Oak Ridge Boys. Oh, man. That would be such an amazing opportunity because that's the thing that I thrive on because I like to learn and meet new people. And so, and when I say that I'm excited about the people that I meet, you know, I had heard a lot about you before I actually ever met you. And then when I met you, you did not disappoint, you know, but not only that, but you know how you meet celebrities and it's, I know they have a hectic life and they, you know, they're busy and people are always wanting from them. But being as though that you have done all of these things, and by the way, they need to watch the episode. We're going to have it out on the internet and you all can tag it. But it's amazing of your journey and where you have been and that you're not arrogant. Like, that was the thing that got me. You were not arrogant. Even when I came and knocked on the door with no appointment, you was like, come on in. How you doing? Sit down. This is what we do. You want to learn? And I'm like, what? Like, why? You know, and that was one of the questions that I was asking you in the interview. What keeps you so grounded? And you shared some awesome things about your family that keeps you grounded. So I'm excited. But yes, the Oak Ridge Boys, definitely. I would love to interview them. Well, we'll try to arrange that. They're going to be at the Tulsa State Fair wow. in September. So maybe there's some time around that. Or one of the other times when they come through here and, and play an engagement. But those four guys are genuine themselves. So when you're talking to them, you're going to get whatever question you answer, ask them, you're gonna get the answer that is gonna be. They don't think about, well, what am I supposed to say? Or what is somebody <laughs> looking for me to say? They're gonna give it to you from their heart and soul. And I, and you know what, that's that's what I find amazing about interviewing people. That And those are the interviews that, you know, I love all of the interviews, but the ones that kind of throw me really like and make my life just feel like wonderful are the people who give us the straight answers, you know? And so a lot of times when people um, want to come on the show, they're like, hey, can you give me some interviewing questions? And I'm like, 
we don't do that here. And I was like, well, what are we going to talk about? I was like, we're on a journey. I tell you that that day, you were, I was like, we're on a journey. I'm going to discover you. You're going to learn some things about me. Of course, they're going to talk more. I want them to talk more. But the thing is, is that the interviews that go over so well are the interviews where the people are not speaking in a canned scripted thing and it's just genuine and you and then people feel that the viewers feel that you know even if the show is not in real time or if it's live they feel that connection well uh, I think that you uh, you do that so well so I want to ask you a couple of questions now okay. because the more that we have spent time together the more I'm learning about you I didn't know that you were a teacher a college teacher I didn't know that you were a motivational speaker. I knew you as a television personality. Yes. So where did you get your education? Wow. Well, you know, I'm originally from, you know, that little town in Ferguson that nobody's ever heard of. That's where I'm actually from. And, you know, I bounced around a lot when I was a little kid. So then when I got through high school, I had went to college in St. Louis and I did horrible. You know, I was taking remedial classes and I failed all of those classes. And then basically, you know, I felt like life was over with. But then I decided that if I needed to change, I needed to leave the environment of St. Louis. So I come all the way from St. Louis, six and a half hours to a little town called Coffeeville, Kansas, which you know no, a lot know, about because well, yeah. you're from Independence, Kansas. And who would have known that 20 some years ago I would be meeting you in like this, but I go to Coffeeville Community College, and at first, because I did so bad in the other community college in St. Louis, they didn't want to let me in. But I got favor, they let me in, and basically they told me, they said, you're going to have to make a 3.0. And I was like, three, what? I, I'm used to making 2.0s just to be able to play sports. And you know what? Mr. Halsey, first semester, 3.1, 3.4, 3.5, 3.9, I graduated with honors. Then I was like, man, this success is good, and it's got a blueprint, so let me try my luck at going to the university. I go there, I still maintain the 3.0. Then I go and get my bachelor's, then it was my master's degree, and then I, the last straw was I started working on a doctorate degree um, through the university, Walden University Online, which is online school, just like Halsey Institute. And um, I just said I will stop there. I didn't finish it, but I did leave with a 4.0. Well, it's in process. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know if I want to go back again, but education is a lot. But, you know, I have toyed with the idea of going back. But, yes, I am a professor at a, one of the local universities here in town, um, Langston University. I teach entrepreneurial studies. But, yes, I do travel and do consulting and speak to people on, you know, from East Coast to West Coast north and south so and the midwest so i'm all out there trying to do stuff to teach people and educate people about you know same things you do well i think that's so i want to congratulate you thank and you. tell you that thank you for offering that service because all of us some way or another are in service yes we're in service to humanity we're in service to our fellow person out there we're in service to the community and you certainly personify that with your television show and bringing interesting people on your show to help them share their lives and how they're living their lives. But the more that we can help people find their way yes. and find a niche in life that they can do and do it well and enjoy it, I think we performed a pretty good service right there. And that's part of any education, yes, whether you're teaching it in a, in a bricks and mortar or whether you're teaching it online, it's the fact that you're giving people information that needed uh -huh. to help them become more successful in their lives. And this is why we started our online school, is because I've had so many people come to our office or write me letters or ask me, say, how can I get in this business of music and entertainment? I know nothing about it. Right. I just know that I feel that music, I feel that, that I have to do something. Is there a job for me out there? Is there a place for me? And I've always said, yes, there is. If you know something about it, if you become qualified to do that job, there is a place for you. And get in it and learn how to do it and do it well. Well, well since you said that, I do want to bring up this because of the Halsey Institute and you teaching about entertainment. Because I know as we talked earlier and over the last couple of weeks, the thing that struck me the most about the Institute was as I talk to you, I'm learning more and more. But because my journey to getting a TV show it wasn't easy. And a lot of people call me now and they're like, dude, 
how did you get a TV show? And I was like, you got like two hours so that I can talk to you because people don't understand that when they see you on TV, you know, um, people don't want to start off small. I started off small in the local market and everything, but let me go back a little bit further. I actually was an entertainer and show choir in college. And so I sang like, oh, play me some mountain music. I did that and everybody used to laugh at me because I was doing country music in the show choir. But I went from there into being an actor. And then I'd realize that, you know, acting, going back to what you said, there's a place for you if you learn your craft. And I'd realize that I wouldn't be a great actor, but I'm, I'm okay at acting. You know, I could do it if I did more classes. However, a friend of mine by the name of Brian Shordorf, um, he, I met him and he wanted to do, he started this documentary on Wayman Tisdale, the late great Wayman Tisdale. And, um, it was my first time of being behind the scenes of the camera and then I went into producing and then as I started going into producing then I you know I did the Wayman Tisdale we won an Emmy and that was I was like okay I love producing but then it was discovery and that's what your courses do they're going to help people discover you know more about like you said what's better for them to do because everybody is not going to be the singer Everybody's not going to be the great actor, but find your place and, you know, get involved. So when I was going through all of that, then I one day I wanted to produce something so bad. I was waiting for our next documentary to come through and I was watching something on TV and it was a talk show. And I was like, they got a talk show. I would like to have a talk show. And I got a little upset and I just lost it. And I just started looking for places to get a talk show. And then I got an opportunity to get a talk show. And by the way, the first show wasn't that great, but it was enough to show the people that I could do it and pull it off. And show yourself you could do it. Yes, sir. Yes, confidence was big. Confidence was big because in this journey, most people don't know. They, they will always ask me, how did you do it? But there were some things that would be perceived as setbacks, but they were not necessarily setbacks. They were just opportunities to learn new things so that I could help accelerate and get to another level in what I was doing in my television show. Well, I, when I do a lecture, I talk to students, I always encourage them to fail because some of the biggest lessons that I've ever learned have come from my failures, not my successes. So don't be afraid to fail in anything that you do because that's where our biggest stepping stone is gonna come. Yes. Is getting back up and doing it better or doing it right the next time. Exactly. And my book, my first book that I wrote, The Other Era, A Real World Alternative to a Millionaire, when I first launched out to write that book, I had no money to publish the book or anything. All I did was start at writing. I had attempted to write a book so many times. I already got to the first two or three pages and then it was done. But this time I went and I heard a speaker by the name of Far Gray. And on my plane ride from New York to Tulsa, I had wrote 20 pages of the book. Well, now I'm committed into it. But at first, so many times I tried to write a book, but the one thing that I say in my book is this, failure is, is more than an option. You have to fail because you learn while you're failing. Because if you don't fail, you don't make you you don't learn. You know, you, you learn from your mistakes and you improve those mistakes and then you become better. Well, Corey, hey, thanks for dropping by the office today and, and we had a good visit and a good chat. Thank we you. we ate a little chili together. Yes, it was great. Yeah, and, and thanks for having Manisa and I on your show, which airs this fall. So and you're great. Congratulations. Uh, no, thanks thank for, you. Thanks for being a part of our team. No problem. Corey Taylor. Thank you. Watch for him. Thank you.